Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing another One Piece review, this time of the uh, Dress Rosa arc. I'm currently halfway through, I'm up to about chapter 748 I believe it was. Um, I'm doing this review about halfway through because I can only read 50 chapters before I start forgetting things, so the next 50 chapter review will have to wait till next week. But a lot has happened in this first half of the Dressrosa arc, and there is a lot of things that we can talk about. I'm currently up to the part where uh, Don Flamingo has used his string ability, he's used uh, the birdcage, right? So everyone's trapped in the Hunger Games-esque birdcage, where he's given everyone the ultimatum to either kill him or to kill the people that he wants them to kill. Either way, he's given the scenario of kill or be killed. But before we begin today's video, uh, there's something that I want to tell you guys. It's actually pretty exciting. Um, I've been working on something behind the scenes and I've been playing it pretty close to the chest. I haven't mentioned it on the channel yet at all, uh, but I feel as if I might be at the point where I can mention it. I have been working on, for the past couple of months, I've been working on a One Piece game uh, for your mobile. So if everything goes as smoothly as it has been and if everything goes to plan in the next month or two um, I should be releasing a mobile game based on One Piece. So that ought to be pretty exciting. Um, if you want to know what it's like it's kind of like a Pokemon game like that's the the way that um, the engine that I used it, it kind of creates like Pokemon or early Final Fantasy games so I've essentially made a One Piece game in like a Pokemon engine with like ship battles and like pirating stuff so you can go out in the sea and you like go and sink marine ships or other pirate ships or whatever and you like capture gold and stuff to upgrade your ship, upgrade your characters, buy weapons, there's a hockey system, there's a devil fruit system, there's all this kind of stuff. Um, I'm kind of hoping that I will be completely caught up with One Piece before I release it. Um, at the rate I'm going, 50 chapters a week, it should take me about six weeks to be completely caught up from the point I am at now. But yeah, anyway, I, that's that's it. I'm pretty excited about it. The storyline's kind of funny. It's got like a big One Piece-esque twist in it where you, things kind of seem one way, but then they get a big twist on it. Um, really excited. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks I might be able to do like a bit of gameplay demonstration or something for you. Maybe I'll do a live and I'll like play the game on live or something. Um, and one of the reasons that I am bringing up the fact that I am uh, creating this One Piece game kind of like a month or two before I'm thinking about releasing it is I want to hear if there is anything that you think should be added to the game, right? So I've kind of given you that overview that it is, it plays out like a Pokemon game. It plays out like early Final Fantasy games. Um, you know, there is ship battling, there is like ship to ship battling and like kind of like a pirate system where you get to go and like sink other ships and collect all their plunder and do all that. You can board other ships and you have your Final Fantasy fight on your other ship that you're boarding and all that kind of stuff. And then you explore the islands. There's a couple of islands. You go around and you meet people in towns or you go through the forest and you fight forest creatures or, you know, I'm not going to tell you too much about the story, but you fight villains associated with the story and stuff like that. Um, if there's anything that you think should or desperately or want or, you know, would be nice to include into that game, uh, please do comment it. That's kind of why I'm bringing this up now. So if there's any big things that I've forgotten or don't know about or just didn't even think of, it'd be really great to learn of it now so I could implement it into the game. But yeah, anyway, uh, enough about that. Let's get on with the review. All right, so a lot has happened in this arc. Uh, first of all, I have come to respect Don Flamingo a lot. Um, I actually really like him as a villain now. Um, before this arc, I never really respected him as a villain, right? Like in the story, like he kind of, you know, he looks crazy and he, you know, kind of has that thing with his tongue that he does. And like, I get it, like he looks crazy and people talk about him and they're like, oh, that Don Flamingo, he's bad news. You know, he's a crazy dude. He does bad stuff. He's a bad dude. You don't want to mess with him. But until this arc, you never really like you know, you never really got the, like, oomph of it. You never got the, like, full force brute of him, like, being crazy and him being a good villain, so to say. But in this one, I feel as if we did really get that. 
And, you know, as I say in pretty much every review I do, I love good villains. Stories are only as good as their villains. So I actually am really glad that Don Flamingo went from that guy that was just like, oh yeah, he's your, you know, tacky looking bad guy because people say he's a bad guy to like, oh shit, this guy's actually a pretty bad dude and he's like good at what he does. And there were a couple of moments that did really make me uh, respect him. You know, first of all, there is that, um, the whole backstory thing, right? Like how he becomes the king and how his uh, ancestors were once the uh, original kings, the original leaders of that land, and then, you know, all that stuff happened. And so he came back to claim that throne again. And the way that he did it, you know, he originally rocked up and was like, look, I don't want the land, um, you just give me the money and I'll go my way. You just buy the land off me because I am the original inheritor of this land, I am the original heir here. So I do own this kingdom, but if you just give me all the money that I ask for, a billion dollars I think it was, if you just give me that billion dollars, then you can keep the kingdom, right? And so they go out and, you know, he's got all of his army out there and they're, you know, collecting all the money and the civilians are there and the king's there and he's like, you know, lowering his head to all of his uh, subjects saying, look, I can't explain it right now, but, you know, everything will be fine. We just need your money. I'm so sorry. I'll make this up to you. Just please do as I ask right now. And all of his subjects like, yeah, that's our king, our king that's kept us out of wars for a hundred years and kept us safe and kept us looked after. We'll do whatever he needs, right? And then they're all out and they're giving him the money. And that's when Don Flamingo comes in and uses his uh, string ability, right? And just on that, I did not expect his ability to be string. That's super weird. I did not expect his ability to be string. But as we've seen, the abilities that he's been able to use with that string ability has been awesome. For example, when he controls the king or controls the soldiers to go crazy and start killing all of the civilians. Or again, at the point that I'm up to where he does the birdcage thing... And he is now also controlling people to kill each other as well. There's also that, uh, the mannequin copy that he makes of himself. I'm pretty sure I saved a panel with it here and I'll put it up here. Um, you know, and to me, it's really interesting because when you think of, um, you know, devil fruits and you think of like fire fist ace and you think of, you know, the magma guy or the guy that's made out of lightning or, you know, all that kind of stuff compared to all of them, uh, you know, if someone was like, oh yeah, you know, he might be made out of lightning, but I control string, right? You'd think uh, you, you have nothing. You got a dud devil fruit. But it's really interesting how Oda is able to write these things and, you know, he can basically create anything that he wants and he's so clever at what he does that he can justify it, right? Like, um, the marionette made out of string so Don Flamingo doesn't have to be in a room and he doesn't have to have his body there so if someone comes in and chops off his head it's just a marionette made of, made of string you know if he was controlling people you know that's how you control marionettes through strings and it's just interesting that something on paper as you know lame as the devil fruit ability to use string he can create such a powerful monster with that ability like he can swing from the clouds with his string ability he can create a doppelganger he can control people he can create a cage of blades that people can't escape of the point i'm trying to get at here is that i um I, in this arc i did get a brand new found respect for don flamingo and for oda for his ability to write something like you know the devil fruit of string into something like engaging and interesting and like depthful like that all right next we obviously we can't be in this and not talk about this right here right so this is the moment where somebody takes on luffy's disguise at the coliseum and we don't see who it is but we see how much it means to luffy and we see this part where he says something like um uh, I thought he was dead, I thought he had died back then, right? And it's so painful, and I couldn't imagine being someone that was, like, up to date at this moment, and you had to wait, like, weeks for the reveal that it was Sabo, right? But in that moment, I knew it was him, right? It had to be him, because, you know, not a lot of people die in One Piece, but, yeah, I knew it had to be him. And the interesting thing was that before this moment, there was also, and if I have the panel, I'll throw it up here, there was also um, the part where Luffy is at the gladiator prison part with Rebecca, and he's talking about how the prison reminds him of his hometown, because it's like, you know, trash day or something like that, 
And it was just really interesting that they took that moment to be like, hey, do you remember Luffy's backstory? Here's a here's a little snippet of Luffy's backstory. Let's just let's just get Luffy's backstory fired up in your mind again. And then, you know, a couple chapters down the road, we have this moment where we get um, you know, Sabo come back and engage with Luffy, right? But more than Sabo coming back, which was cool, and I can't wait to find out more about him, and he did eat um, Ace's fire fruit, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, we also got Koala, right? So um, I was I was reading it, and I saw Koala, and I saved the picture of her, and I was like, who is she? Why does she look so familiar? And then, like, it finally clicked. Koala is the girl that uh, Fishman Tiger saved. And if you look at her job in the Rebellion, it's something like, um, karate, Fishman karate teacher or something. So that was really cool. It was really cool to see Koala again and just have her, um, I don't know, back in the story and doing stuff again and with Sabo. And it'll be really interesting to find out how she made her way to the revolutionaries because she would have found out that Fishman Tiger would have been betrayed by the humans and sold out to the marines so maybe she was like against the marines after they killed the man that saved her life i don't know but i was pretty cool i was pretty excited to see her again i was pretty excited to see sabo again and i'm looking forward to the moment where we finally get to see like luffy and sabo interact again this moment here i thought was also really interesting uh the blind marine admiral that um luffy ends up interacting in the beginning which i actually thought was such a great classic luffy moment when he's there and the blind man's playing roulette and luffy's like you know over walks over and like helps him win and is like hey these people are trying to scam you um it was actually black and not white it's interesting that that marine admiral is planning on abolishing the entire Royal Shikibaraki uh, institution, right? That'll be really interesting to play out because it feeds into something that I really do like about One Piece. One of the things I really like about One Piece is there's always three forces working against each other. There's always the Marines, there's the Straw Hat Pirates, and then there's whatever pirates that they're fighting with at the time right and there's always like people join up with this people join up with this and there's there's always like this weird power shift going on like in the last one the straw hats teamed up with the marines in this one the marines teamed up with uh don flamingo right so it's always it's always interesting how the power dynamics shift because there are three different factions at work at any one time and this one's really interesting because to me the fact that this guy wants to abolish the royal shikibaki works in Luffy's favor and against Luffy, right? Because obviously Luffy wants to take those guys out as well because he wants to be the king of the pirates. He wants to, you know, have this position, have that position. He wants to take out all the people that are stronger than him. So this works in Luffy's favor, but Luffy also probably wants that position. So it also works against him. So it'll be really interesting to see moving forward how all that interacts with itself. We also find out some interesting things about the Devil Fruits, such as uh, if a Devil Fruit user dies, his ability goes back into the world or whatever, and then is regrown in whatever way that the Devil Fruits are grown. So there's always the ability for a Devil Fruit to be, or a Devil Fruit ability to be in the world, because as, as soon as someone dies with it, a new one is regrown. We also get a few interesting images of, like, um, apples, turning into devil fruit and we got that in uh punk hazard as well when that big slime monster was coming and as he was coming um there was like a barrel of apples inside of a cart or something and you saw as the slime was coming through it was turning those apples into the devil fruits so that's really interesting and we're getting a lot of information about like how devil fruits are cultivated or how devil fruits are created i'm really hoping that we get some information about like how devil fruits originated and how they grow in the wild because we saw the dwarves kind of cultivating and growing apples into devil fruit so it'll be really interesting to find out how they're naturally made um i want to show these panels here as well so we've got the one with the guy with the spike on the head and we've got the one with the tin soldier holding his dead wife right and i just wanted to talk just for a moment about oda's ability to make you care so quickly about these characters right so the guy with the horn on his head right or his head in the shape of a spike or whatever you know you just see his backstory and his backstory is so brief 
and quick, but at that moment where you see him go back to his, like, treasure hoard, and he's just, like, smashing his head on the ice, and he's just, like, completely broken down because he can't get to all of his life's work, you know, like, you can't help but feel bad for the guy, right? And that brief little backstory was so quick, but, you know, it's such a testament to Oda's ability to make you care about his characters. And the same goes for that Tin Soldier, right? Like, obviously we got a lot more time with that Tin Soldier, so you should have developed some kind of, like, care for him, like, basic human empathy or whatever. But in that moment where you find out that he was the guy and he's, like, chopped off his leg to go and kill, you know, Don Flamingo and he's been forgotten by his wife and that's why she came into town and that's why she was shot and then he goes and he holds her and it says something like i'm made of tin so i can't even feel the warmth of your body as you bleed out in my arms i was like sheesh you know what i mean like you you can't help but feel for these characters and it's such a testament to oda's ability to write so well I'll just talk about one more thing before I go on and continue reading this because I've got 50 more chapters ahead of me and I am interested to see how this ends. Um, I want to talk about Usopp and the whole toy situation, right? Um, you know, it was a very classic Usopp moment. It was, it's interesting because we had a lot of really interesting Usopp moments before they all split up and then we followed Luffy as he um, goes through with the Amazon Lily, pretty much from Amazon Lily up, you know, was all pretty much Luffy based, right? Um, but before that, we were getting a lot of really big, like, Usopp moments. We're getting a lot of big Usopp growth moments, like when he fights Luffy for the ship or whatever, you know, when all those things, right? He, he had a whole lot of really big character developed moments. And then we didn't really get anything for a while. But I feel like this might have been, you know, a flashback to one of those moments where he's just like, I'm not your hero. And all the little dwarves are like, we're not afraid to die. We're not afraid of this. We're not afraid of that. And the guy's like stepping on him and squishing him. And they're just like, Usopp will save us. And Usopp comes back and he does save him. And, you know, all that stuff happens. And all of those prisoners are holding him up and the light's shining through and they're like, he's an angel. And Usopp's there like, um, you know, let me take you to salvation. But really he's saying like, why are you holding up here? This is excruciating. I'm bleeding out and I feel like I'm being executed. But all they're hearing through his mumbling is like, let me take you to salvation. You know, it was a very Usopp moment and I did enjoy that. Um, everything to do with the toys. Um, I thought that was really interesting and I thought it was interesting how, um, sugar, didn't put the contract on the toy soldier because he was the first ones there and that whole moment that happened must have been so like shocking and happened so fast as he's you know chained up cuts off his own leg jumps at the guy you know she manages to turn him into a soldier but then he's out the window before anyone can really figure out what's going on um everything that happened with the toy stuff including uh when she feeds Usopp the grape and he like explodes out and she is so terrified that she faints and all the people turn back into humans. I thought that toy thing was really good. Um, it did seem sus at the beginning when they all go into that town and there's all the toys and they're all walking around. It did seem very like creepy Disney, but um, yeah, I've enjoyed it so far. I've enjoyed Res Dress Rosa so far. Um, I'm gonna go and do the other 50 chapters now. Hopefully you'll join me next week and we'll talk about the entire Dress Rosa arc as a complete thought bubble. But for now, those are my thoughts halfway through. Basically, I've got a lot more respect for uh, Don Flamingo. I think he's um, a good villain. I think he's a good military technician. I think he's got some interesting things going on about him. I enjoyed that whole Colosseum part. I enjoyed that Sabo's come back. I like seeing Koala again. I hope that we're going to see uh, the dragon because uh, as far as I'm aware, I don't think Dragon and Luffy have really had anything to do with each other yet. So it'd be really interesting to see them interact with each other. Like I know in, uh, what was it, Luge Town, I think it was, the one just before they get to the Grand Line, that Dragon did save Luffy from Smoker. I remember that. But I don't think that we've seen them interact with each other yet. So it'll be really interesting to see that happen. And I imagine that it might not be now that they'll interact with each other, but maybe at the beginning of the next arc. So maybe Sabo and Koala will be there and they'll be like, hey, yeah, you know, we work for Dragon. We work for your dad. You want to come back to the hideout or whatever and we'll, we'll meet your dad. Anyway, um, one of the things, big things I'm really interested in is how there's still 50 chapters left in this arc right now, because it seems like they're pretty much at like a final battle with Don Flamingo right now. 
and you know kind of everything's up in the air so i'm really interested to find out what's happening over the course of 50 chapters because it feels like you know there should really only be about 20 chapters left so i'm really interested to find out next um thanks for joining me like the video leave a comment uh subscribe to the channel i'm really excited about this one piece game um comment below anything you think i should add to it um, and as always thank you very much i'll see you next week